Hello everybody, my name is Angel of Darkness, and today I'm going to be showing you my fully automated underground nuclear reactor using the Tekken model. Now by underground, I mean that this is completely concealed below ground, there are no traces of it at all above ground, no solar panels, no nothing. So first let's look on how it's going to be cooled. For the, us the reactor is going to be cooled using the usual concept of ice, and to produce this ice I have a total of 8 snow golems, which have block breakers behind them, which will pull snow, you know, will break the snow, drop it into a singularity compressor to com produce ice. Now to power these singularity compressors, I have water mills. There are a total of 126 in between each of these boxes. This is enough power to power all to power four singularity compressors as well as produce excess power. There's also two computers located down here, and these simply display data related to the ice production. We have first of all the power status, which simply displays if there's power be there's power to actually run the singularity compressors. Our ice production, which is currently offline, this will go online when we actually turn on the reactor and ice is being produced. And then we have these four extra values right here, which these are used to show the average ice that's being produced per snow golem in a minute. Now if I were to head up, let's head above ground, or back up top, and we'll be heading to the command center, or control center, whatever you want to call it. First of all, we have the two computers, as you've seen right below, same exact thing. We have our MFSU computers, which display how much power is stored in our groupings of MFSUs. We have a reactor grouping, a wall 1 grouping, and a wall 2. Remember, those will come back to them in a bit. We also have a computer that displays our reactor status. This again shows if it's on the line or offline, simply running or not, in other words. It's temperature, it's power output, and then we also have these two other values, which is the reactor door, which is the door that leads to the reactor, as well as the excess ice, which is Excess, as it sounds, it's excess ice is not being used by the reactor and being disposed of. So let's take a look into the reactor itself. So here we have this wall right here, but if we come up to one of these two computers, we'll see it has an option to open closed reactor room door. Let's go ahead and do that. With a simple password, we open the door to the reactor room. Now it should be noted these two computers are completely identical and they allow for both opening and closing of this door as well as turning on and off the reactor. Another cool little feature with them is, for instance, is how its menu works. For instance, if I realize I don't want to be in this menu, all I simply do is delete all the characters and once all characters are deleted, or if there are none, you just hit the backspace, it'll automatically return to the main menu. So here we have our reactor room right here. Our, you see our Mark V reactor, it's sitting behind a wall of three layer thick reinforced concrete and two layer, layer thick reinforced glass. We also have our two MFSU walls, which if you remember before, there are 30 of these on each side, and there are also five of them sitting above the reactor, which are reactor MFSUs. This totals out to be 65 MFSUs, which equal to holding 650 million EUs. Now if we head to the back of our reactor, we have the reactor door, which you saw on the main screen. Here we simply, once again, can open it and close it with a password, and it also displays above right here, if you notice, that the reactor is online or offline. And if we head inside, we can view again our reactor, which is running primarily on uranium cells with a row of ice, and a simple little button that allows us to also open and close the door from inside. Simple as that. So that's just the basics. Let's go ahead and start the reactor up and show you what it kind of looks like once running. All right, so back at the computers. This time we'll select option number two, as we did before. Type in the password, and it turns on. Now we don't get any message here, but if we come over here, we'll notice that all of a sudden ice production is turned online. This means that now the reactor, now that the system is online, it's producing ice. Now we won't see any values here yet because those don't actually calculate, will not be calculated until after the first minute passes. But if we come down here and we look at the type, bleh, the pipe too, we'll notice that ice is flowing. You'll also notice that the reactor, if we come back up here, has not turned online yet. This is because the reactor is on a delayed start. It does not use actually computer craft though, it uses repeaters, five of them to be precise, that equals out to about a minute and four second delay. So let's give this a second to start up and we'll see, we'll get moving from there. Alright, so here we're back. Alright, so we just finally got our first set of data from the ice factory. As we can see the creatures are producing around 150 ice per piece and over here it says, nine, let's say similar data now Something should be noted, if I were to go down below and check the computers below, their numbers would actually be more even on either side. There's some sort of time delay. I haven't exactly figured it out, but it's close enough. Now if we come over here, we'll notice that our reactor is online. First of all, you see the reactor temp, which will fluctuate. It'll go to about 300 and then go back down to zero. And we also have our output. Now if we come up to the reactor itself, we'll notice that there are these four lights that'll turn on. This is a nice little indicator that lets me know that the reactor is online and running. And unfortunately, I don't know why, but the lights don't like to always turn on right away. 
and that's pretty much it. You know, very simple. We can see if we come over here to the MFSU computer and we watch it, we'll notice if it wants to work that the values are actually slowly going up. And any power that is actually stored in the MFSU react, excuse me, the reactor MFSU is actually completely, almost completely drained and is dumped right into the walls and will not actually start to fill until both these are full. And this is a fix on an old version, an older build I had of this where those would actually back up. So that's just the basic of how it runs. But let's take a little more look into the automated side since that's partially what this is. All right, so one of the first features we can look at is the computer itself. Now, the computer does not actually will not is not the final fail safe check for the reactor. However, if a, a service does go down while the reactor is running, it will turn it off. Another little interesting feature is that since these two computers are the same, I had to find a way in which if either one turned on the reactor, either one could turn it off because initially this would not work. This is partially because I did not use a toggle switch to turn on the reactor. It did not send a pulse from the computer, but instead the computer provided the power source. Now to do this, if I were to shut the reactor off on either side, all I have to simply do is hit yes. This would then send a redstone signal through a color line, which then all computers would pick up, and once it detects it, shuts off all services. So we simply shut the reactor. So now that we've shut it off, if we look, the reactor is offline, ice production has stopped, and everything else, and as you can see, the lights are turning off. Now another interesting thing to note is if I try to turn back on the reactor while it's turning off, it'll give me a reactor's cooling down message. This is because the, currently how this build works, if I were to simply be able to turn it back on due to how the AND gates would work and all the other safety features, this would actually allow the reactor to turn back on. But the problem is ice production had stopped so there would be a break in ice flow. So by putting this safety feature in, we ensure that the reactor cannot be running unless there's an ice flow going to it. Let's take a look at some of the other safety features that are implemented into this. And we'll go ahead back on down to the snow golems. So here we are, coming back here, we have a simple system where here we find, this is how we compute the average, it's, it goes through an item detector, sends a signal, you know, we have the block breakers are hooked up to a redstone line, as well as these transposers which pull the ice out of the singularity compressors, and those all work off timers below. Now if we go below here, where this mess of wires is, first of all we'll notice these two boxes. These are where the water mills sit that you saw above. They actually, and they also have this little red, wireless redstone receiver hooked up to them, just so I can shut off the lights in case I turn off the lights to the rest of the facility, so it looks nice. Now here we're going to note our first of many safety features, and this is our MFSU. If this MFSU is to run out of power, it'll actually send a pulse out saying it's empty. Doing so, it'll go through and it'll toggle this toggle switch to the off position. These work very similar to how a breaker would work. When these go into the off position, they link up to, again to a, ch a series of AND gates that are further down, and if not all of these are in the proper position, the reactor will not start. Now we use the now the reason they get turned off is because in case the line is broken as well, this will also allow for the system to realize, hey, we're not even receiving a signal. Again, working off the same concept. These should be known will not turn back on until a user comes down and actually flips them back into the position. They, even if these were to gain power again, the reactor will not stop until the user comes down and toggles these back into the on position. Another one of our safety features that we have is our item is our ice flow detectors. Here we have two item detectors that hook up to timers. Now these timers are currently not allowed to tick, but once ice flow is turned on, they will start ticking. What these do is these are to make sure that ice flow is coming through the pipes. They are set at a very precise time, so that means if the ice flow does not start coming through very shortly after they start up, they will automatically trigger flipping these, again, these two toggles, which then follow the same concept as these. Now it should be noted that for this to work properly, a minimum of five ice is needed in each singularity compressor before the system can before the system starts for its first time. After every following time, you'll see that there'll be four in there, but it'll always fire fine. This is to ensure that these timers work properly again, because they are on a very short timetable. They they will go they will trigger the um, breaker rather quickly. So by doing this, we ensure that it works properly every time. And here we have our two time uh, two more timers. This one's used for the block breakers. The fastest it can be set is 0.8 seconds. Any faster and actually will cause backup and the singularity compressors will not be able to handle it that quick. And the other timer simply sits on the transposers that pulls the ice from the block break, or excuse me, from the singularity compressors. And this is set at the slowest, lowest time possible. It doesn't need to worry about anything special. Now let's go look a little more into where this, snow, this ice exactly goes. And if you're wondering, this is that pipe that we saw above ground right next to the snow golems. If I can get in here. So here we go, above ground, here's the pipe again, and it simply flows all this way up into the reactor. But now let's take a look down here. Here is where a lot of our, more of our little automated safety features come into play. 
these two groupings right here link to both the, I the power and the ice production that we saw below with the MSFU and the item counters. Each one this links to the each side. We also have this line right here. This is the line the power line that allows the timers to turn on to start producing ice. This also must be considered on for the system to run. We have this purple line right here. This purple line, which is actually connected down here, links to the reactor door that we show that we open with the computer. Anytime that door is open, the reactor will not allow will not allow it to be run. Or excuse me, will not allow it to run. However, the minute the door is closed, the system is allowed to come back on. This just allows in case you need to go quickly look at something or do some maintenance or whatnot. But make sure that the system is, or excuse me, the reactor is completely surrounded in reinforced items. The blue line here leads to our excess ice system, which I will show you in a second. The red, this is the signal that is sent from the computer that tells the system to turn on. As you can see, here's our five repeaters. We also have the green. This links to our MSFUs above, which again we'll look at in a second. The gray here actually is used to send a signal back to let us know if that, react, that red signal is still online, which has to do with that cooldown. And then again, we have the black, which is actually the reactor itself, and this is just to let me know if it's on or off. So let's go take a quick look at that XSI system I talked about. Now this system is used right here. Um, if the reactor does not need the ice, it'll pump it into the system, which is then simply disposed of. But this works off a system very similar to the ice flow systems I showed you before, in which it uses a timer and a toggle and everything else. Now currently this system is disabled. I'm having an issue with trying to get the timers just right and whatnot. I think I might have to redesign the piping a little bit to actually make it work properly, but as of now it's not actually enabled due to a small problem with the initial starter. Now if we were to come back this way, I'll also, now let's go take a look at the actual above the reactor and show you a little more of the system. Now here we are above the reactor. Now if you remember I said there were those reactor MFSUs. Here is five of them. Now how this system works is that when it gains power, it'll dump, when the reactor produces power, it'll dump it into these MFSUs, which then feed off into our two wall MFSUs, which are located on either side, just like this, one, until they are full. Once the walls fill, then, the, then these will start to fill up. And then once these fill, they will give off a redstone signal. When all five give off a successful redstone signal, they will send a signal out to this green line right here. And once again, just like all our other systems, will toggle the breaker. This is to ensure the MFSUs don't blow up from getting overloaded with power or anything else. Very simple design, and it works flawlessly. Now let me go. Show, now let's go take a look real quick and behind the computers. As you can see, here's our mess of lamps and everything. And here is the back of one of our computers. As you can see, we have this is the ice display. This is the reactor display. The ice display runs on a yellow line, which is shared with the other computer. The white, and then is then linked to all our other lines. We have this one, for instance, red still hot. This was used personally when I was debugging, still building it, which let me know that that red pulse was still on. However, I've decided to leave it just to be nice. We also have a manual override switch right now. This was used because when I was still programming, I was testing the system. And then again, we have all our power supplies. You know, this brown is actually used to disable the system when, or it's actually used to detect, yeah, it's supposed to disable the system when I, you know, shut off the reactor, as I mentioned before. And the other side is very similar to this as well. So as you can see, it's a rather simple system. It works very well, other than the ice production, which is still in the works. Um, currently, uh, all the computers that are running on here actually total up to over 1,200 lines of code, with these two computers right here taking the most at 400 apiece. But that's about it. So there you have it, my fully automated underground nuclear reactor. Again, this works very nicely. If I were to you know, implement this into a server, I'd probably have to place world anchors around it so that you know, if we walked out of distance, the computers wouldn't shut off and the signal wouldn't shut off, but I mean, it's not bad. I, again, another future plan I plan to do is finding a way to actually tap into these MFSU lines so that we can actually transmit power. I'm thinking using like teleporting pipes. Um, it would be really cool to do that because then if these doors close, you wouldn't have people coming in here and trying to interfere with it. But other than that, I think it's pretty much good. Um, and actually, now actually, here's something interesting I did forget to leave. Here we see an error has been produced. Now this happens when there's an error in the ice flow. I forgot to shift, and let's go check it out and figure out what exactly just happened. And this probably has to do with, as I pointed out before, there's probably not enough excess ice sitting in the system. Now if we were to look into these, now currently they're producing ice, and it's flowing nice and smooth and everything, and this probably happened because I did not have those five ice blocks that I talked about. But seeing as that's probably the case, that usually is a, just a bad face safe feature, so let's go ahead and bypass those. As you can see, we turn on the breakers, 
and now our little timers are working just flawlessly, so that's a pretty good sign to assume that we just didn't have enough excess ice to prime the system. And now, if I were to come back up here, close that off, we'll see now it all since says online instead of error, and we head back to the reactor, and by now it probably should have started up. Eh, maybe not. Should have started up pretty soon. Oh, it actually just started up. Now again, if that those were to either one of those to break, this automatically would shut down and would not start back up until those breakers were flipped. However, it's advised that the user, you know, probably should shut off the reactor and then flip the breaker to ensure that, you know, in case there was something more severe. So, well, I think there, that's about it. And hope you enjoy my film. If you have any comments or anything you want to say, please leave a please leave it below in the comments section. And again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.